A key feature of CockroachDB is its resiliency. If a node goes down, other CockroachDB nodes in the cluster will continue to handle traffic without compromising data correctness or availability. In this lesson, I'm going to run a load locally on my laptop to simulate the cluster's behavior. Note that this is not a valid load test because all the nodes plus the load generator are sharing the same resources. As you can see, I already have my six node cluster running and I'm going to run a workload to simulate multiple client connections. Each node is an equally suitable SQL gateway for the load, but it's always recommended to spread requests evenly across nodes. I'm going to use the open source HA proxy load balancer to do that, which I've already set up. If you're interested in how to do this yourself, check out the docs linked in the video description. Once the workload is running, we'll simulate a node failure and see what happens. In a new terminal window, I'm going to load the YCSB schema and data pointing at HAProxy's port. The YCSB workload is built into the CockroachDB binary and it simulates multiple client connections, each performing mixed read and write workloads. The connection string here starts with Postgres because we're using the Postgres wire protocol, which YCSB already knows how to speak. Once the schema is loaded, I'll run the workload. This command initiates three concurrent client workloads for 20 minutes, but limits the total load to 1,000 operations per second, since I'm running everything on a, on a single machine. Also, the splits flag tells the workload to manually split the ranges a number of times. This is not something you normally do, but for the purpose of this lesson, it makes it easier to visualize the movement of data in the cluster. To check the SQL queries getting executed, I can check the admin UI. We can see on the SQL queries graph that there are reads and writes occurring. If I go to the SQL dashboard, I can see that there are three client connections for the three concurrent workloads from the load generator. To check that HA proxy bounds each connection to a different node, I can change the graph dropdown from cluster to each of the nodes. For three of the nodes, there will be a single client connection. When a node fails, the cluster waits for the node to remain offline for five minutes by default before considering it dead, at which point the cluster automatically repairs itself by re-replicating any of the replicas on the down node to the other available nodes. To demonstrate this, I'm going to kill node 5. Okay, my node 5 has been interrupted and the cluster can't connect to it. If we go back to the admin UI, the dot next to node 5 in the, in the live node section has turned yellow, meaning it's a suspect node. A node is considered suspect if its liveness status is unavailable or if the node is in the process of decommissioning. I can also see the cluster's replication status. In this example, there's a total of 26 ranges. They are also under-replicated at the moment, which indicates a problem in the cluster. In this case, it's because one of the nodes is suspect and the ranges with the replicas on the suspect node aren't at the replication factor of 3. If I go to the metrics overview dashboard and look at the SQL queries graph, I can see that the cluster as a whole is still continuing to serve data despite one of its nodes being unavailable. This shows that when all ranges are replicated to the default of three times, the cluster can tolerate a single node failure because the surviving nodes have a majority of each range's replicas, that is two out of three. If a node is unavailable past a set amount of time, five minutes by default, it will become dead. Once a node is dead, it will display in the dead nodes section. Let's wait for that node to be declared dead so the cluster can up-replicate those under-replicated ranges. And you can see here the node is now dead. Let's watch the replicas per node graph. And there we go. We start to see that the replica count on the live nodes is increasing. This shows that the cluster is repairing itself by up-replicating up missing replicas. If we go back to the cluster overview page, we see that that there are no more under-replicated ranges, even though node 5 is dead. Since there are no longer any under-replicated ranges, my cluster can su survive yet another node failure. I'll demonstrate this by killing node 4. Node 4 is now suspect and node 5 is still dead, but the cluster is still serving reads and writes. Okay, let's restart nodes 4 and 5 and see what happens. I ran the same start command that I originally did for nodes 4 and 5, and they were able to rejoin the cluster. You can see in the admin UI that the nodes have rejoined the cluster and are now marked as live. If we look at the metrics overview, we can also see that the range replicas are rebalancing across all six live nodes. Now you know how to use the admin UI to check node health and replication status, have seen a six node cluster survive two node failures, and have seen a cluster automatically repair itself.